and sisters, it's Brother John, and uh, welcome to our new set. I know I haven't uh, done a video in a few weeks, and I wanted to sort of give you a reason and give you an update as to why that is. Uh, as you can see, we now have a new set. In fact, this is, uh, this is more than just a set to do videos. Uh, there are some key elements that will actually allow, allow us to do live sessions. Um, a few weeks ago, I did my first live um, teaching lesson with uh, my first live teaching lesson in this truth. I have given many sermons back when I was a Sunday Christian, but this was the first time that I stood in this truth. I stood at this podium and I gave a lesson. And um, while we learned some interesting things about that, the big takeaway for me was that I'm supposed to be preaching this gospel, this uh, gospel, this good news of the coming of the kingdom of God. So let me give you a quick tour of the, the set. Uh, obviously, here is what we call the rostrum, where uh, teachers would be teaching from. And I can tell you that it won't be, hopefully it won't be just myself teaching. I know some uh, other brothers that are in this truth, very good teachers, and I'll be inviting them to come by. Um, this is what you call a reader station. This is where the reader will sit. And normally, traditionally, um, the type of teaching we do that I'll be doing requires a reader to actually read the Bible verses and the teacher to sort of explain them and, and to, uh, to flesh out the lesson via the Bible verses. Uh, here we have, as you know, the, the little whiteboard that we always use to kind of expound upon ideas. We have some chairs. We have other uh, lights. Um, and what have you. So we're very excited about about this new phase of our ministry. Um, we hope that uh, I think soon you'll see an a couple different elements. You'll see the videos which we've been recording. You'll see uh, live lessons that you can take advantage of if you are in this region or even over the internet. And that's the third thing which will be uh, live videos, live lessons over the internet that people who are in different areas and regions of the world will be able to take advantage of. Our ministry, um, as we said at the beginning, is really about getting this, this news out, and it's really about getting this news out to, to my fellow Gentiles and those of the nations. I was taught by Israelites, so I carry the real truth of the Bible, and it's my job to share it with the rest of the world. So I plan on doing that, and, uh, and I hope you come with me. So I want to um, share a few verses as, you know, of course we've got to have Bible. If we're going to be teaching the Bible, it's got to be about the Bible. So we're going to start in Mark 16, and we're going to go to verse 15. Of course, we always use the KJV Bible. It's the only one we teach out of. Uh, Mark 16 in verse 15 says, Go ye, uh, excuse me, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this is Jesus talking. This is after he had been um, crucified and resurrected. He came back. He, would, he had ascended into, uh, just prior to ascending up into heaven, but he had become the first fruits for all of us. He had gone from man back into being God. And he's telling us, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And that's what we have to, to do. That's what we are obligated to do. You know, all the parables, many of the parables, really deal with this word. It deals with um, how this word is shared, how this word is taken and taken root deep within us and coming to fruition. So uh, there's a parable of the talents where um, it's really about the word. They're given the word, the three individuals, and it talks about how they do they then go out and uh, in, increase, cause that word to increase by sharing it, or do they hoard it and bury it um, for fear of some sort of supposed retribution? Um, do they cast the seed onto good ground or stony ground, or, or, or is the seed choked up by the worry? So in all the parables we see really... Um, we see a uh, relationship to the Word, how we preach it, how we accept it, how it takes root within our lives. Um, let's continue on. We want to go to Acts chapter 1. Get another admonishment from Jesus. This is fact. Um, the last, again, the last thing he's, one of the last things he said. We're going to Acts 1 and we're going to start at uh, verse 7. 
Acts 1 and verse 7, Jesus said the following to his disciples, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. So the, uh, at this time, the, the apostles were asking Jesus if he was going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Um, they knew the prophecy. They knew that uh, Israel would return to being a nation. And that, in fact, they knew that Jesus would be their king. As uh, born of the line of David, he would sit on David's throne. And he will sit on David's throne. So they're asking him these things. And he's saying, you know what? It's not for you to worry about when these things are going to happen. Um, you know, there's a like God the Father has his own times. You don't need to get caught up in that. But there is something that you do uh, need to do and he says in verse 8 and he tells them what's going to happen next he says but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth so he's telling the apostles I want you to be witnesses to me of course in Jerusalem as they were Israelites and all of Judea uh, and in Samaria which was the northern kingdom at least the land uh, there was no longer Israelites there. And then he says, unto the uttermost part of the earth. So he gives a mandate. And then the last place we want to go is 2 Timothy 4. And the reason I include this is because uh, here in this, Paul the Israelite is actually speaking to Timothy the Greek. Now, Timothy's mother was an Israelite, but it's his father was a Greek, and it is your father that determines your nationality. So... Uh, Paul is giving Tim Timothy a very good admonishment for all people of faith. And we start in verse 1, 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy 4, in verse 1, he says, I charge thee before God, no, excuse me, I, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. You see, that verse right there just destroyed a lot of bad doctrine from the Sunday Christian. He says, before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall do what? He shall judge the quick, who are the alive, and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. See, we're not going to heaven, brothers and sisters. What's going to happen is Jesus is going to come here. There will be two resurrections. There will be the uh, first resurrection. Those are the saints. Those are the elect. Those are the faithful who died right in, in Christ. There will also be those who maybe still living at the time, but they've been faithful, they've maintained their faithfulness to Jesus, uh, they really understood the scripture, they really studied this word, they really preached this word, and they will be made, uh, they will be transformed, and Paul talks about that in this book, how they'll be transformed uh, into, in fact, gods, they will become gods as well, and then there'll be a second resurrection later on, uh, there'll be the white throne judgment, and that will be when all the, all the dead shall rise. They'll all stand before the throne to be judged. Now, those in the first resurrection, which I'm hoping to be a part of, there'll be no judgment for them. They will have already established that they are true people of faith, true elect of God. In that second resurrection, however, you will be judged according to your works. So, and that's what this is telling us. Uh, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So, um, he then goes on in verse 2 to say, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, brothers and sisters, if you know what words like reprove and rebuke mean, this will squash the argument that, well, this will squash the uh, assertion that, oh, I don't argue the Bible. I still get that from Sunday Christians today, friends of mine, but they, I don't argue the Bible with no man. And I'll say, really? Well, go to uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 2 and tell me what that verse means. Because what Paul is saying is, um, well, he tells us exactly why in verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Which is telling us is what has actually come to pass. There will be those who don't want to hear the truth of God. So what they will do is they will hire their preachers. And this goes out to all those Sunday preachers who get the free house, who get a car, who get a stipend from the church, and they get the doctrine to teach as well. 
You can believe that in almost every case, when they're hired on to preach to that Sunday congregation, they are giving a list of the doctrine. You know, in some cases they do tongues, in some cases they don't do tongues, in some cases they do a lot of Holy Ghost. Sometimes, sometimes it's very, uh, uh, it's, uh, very evangelical, sometimes it's very modest and, and, and solemn. But they are told what kind of doctrine they'll be teaching. And if they expect to receive that check and to live in the house and to drive the car, they will teach the doctrine they're told. So, unfortunately, the doctrine that the, that the people in the pews of those Sunday's churches want to hear is, is very much divorced from this book. That doctrine talks about going to heaven. You can't find that in the book. That doctrine talks about a Sunday Sabbath. You can't find that in the book. That doctrine tells you it's okay to eat pork and shrimp and crab. You can't find that doctrine in this book. That doctrine says, hey, Jesus was born on December 25th, and that he was killed on Good Friday and rose on Easter Sunday. None of those things will you find in this book. In fact, you will find things that discredit all of those things in this book. So... Um, that's what we're about here at this channel. Now, I've written something on the whiteboard. It says, The House of Spiritual Israel. And that was, I've got some very good advice from the senior pastor at the church I've been going to. And that affiliation will become clear in the coming weeks. Um, but he said, you know what? If you're going to do something, if you're going to try to teach your brothers and sisters who are Gentiles, name, put spiritual Israel in the name of your church. Why would I do that? Because that's what I am. I've become spirit. In fact, we'll go to, to Ephesians 2 and uh, and we'll talk and we'll we'll talk about exactly uh, what that means. So, you know, there's physical Israelites, and those were the ones, by and large, that um, the only ones that get in fact the nation of Israel are the only is the only nation that God has ever dealt with, and I can read that to you. Uh, but he opened his salvation to the Gentiles, that's my people, European white folks, and to the Hamites, and that's the Africans, uh, and to all people in the, the non-Israelite uh, Shemites. Uh, but in Ephesians 2, and let's see if I can find it, um, it talks about what we come into as we, um, as we become part of this faith. So let me find it real quickly. I hope not to take too long. Um, here we go. Let's start in verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. See, that's what I am. I'm a Gentile in the flesh. Uh, that's how I was born, rather. Uh, my flesh, my bloodline is Gentile. And if you go to Genesis chapter 10, it explains all the, the table of nations. And, and uh, it really, we all come from one of the three sons of Noah after the flood. Uh, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And the Gentiles, my forefathers, come from uh, Japheth. So, but he, and that's who he's talking to, because he's in Ephesus, right? And he's in that region around um, Europe, uh, Greece, and he's Macedonia and and Turkey and those those places. And he's telling these people here that he's been teaching. He says, "Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh." who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Now, so what that means is only Israel then in those days uh, were circumcised. That was That's the covenant that God established with Abraham. And he said you would circumcise all the males of your house, be they your own kin or be they uh, males that you have purchased, basically servants. Uh, purchased and of course we become purchased by Christ's blood but that's another lesson for another time so but he's but the tradition was only amongst the Israelites and that flowed down into Isaac and into Jacob and his sons and on and on on the eighth day you shall circumcise your male son um, now so that was the, the tradition only with the, the Israelites. And this, in Paul's time, they would call themselves the circum, circumcision. And they would call the Gentiles and other nations the uncircumcision. And what that meant is that we were unclean. We were not in that covenant with God. But praise be to God, this book tells us that God has opened his salvation to all. He's made it a common salvation. And that, uh, and that we should be circumcised as well. So no longer is the circumcision only those of Israel. In fact, there's many uh, physical, physically circumcised individuals may not make this kingdom because their hearts aren't circumcised, their minds aren't circumcised. They're relying too much on their lineage and on their flesh 
rather than on the weightier matters of the law. So, verse 12 says, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Brothers and sisters, if you don't have Christ in your life, if you haven't been circumcised in heart, if you're not keeping his law, if you're not part of the commonwealth of Israel, you have no hope. You're, you don't have a God in this world. St. Paul in other places tells us that, that Gentiles wore, uh, sacrifice unto devils, and that's true. That is what we do. In fact, even to this day, we have our sun worship, which happens every Sunday, and we have other idol worship um, in the form of all sorts of pagan worship and idolatry. Uh, but here, Paul is speaking to where I wanted to go, which is the commonwealth of Israel. See, Israel is no longer just the physical sons and daughters. In fact, the day Israel was formed as a nation, we read about in Exodus, they came out of Egypt a mixed multitude. So they've always had strangers among them. And all throughout Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Ezekiel, other prophets, tell, uh, prescribe the manner in which Israel will deal with the strangers among them. Because they've always meant, been part in fact, let's go to, uh, let's, let's hear what God thinks about the stranger a little bit. At least the stranger who keeps his law. Let's go to Isaiah 56. This will be the last place. I didn't mean to do any sort of formal lesson, but I kind of got lost in this as we started talking about it. Um, you know, there are, there are Israelites, and those are the people we call the so-called African Americans. There are Israelites who are relying wholly on their lineage for salvation. In fact, they assert that if you be not Israel in the flesh, you cannot make it. You cannot make it into the kingdom. These are respecters of persons. And unfortunately, it's important that I have a ministry like this because they have ministries like that. And they, they take a high degree of glee in telling Gentiles that they cannot be saved and that instead they'll be going to the lake of fire. Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to use this channel and the, uh, and the lessons that we produce and the artifacts that we produce to prove unequivocally, without a doubt, that they are incorrect. Uh, there is a place for we other nations in God's kingdom. In fact, uh, I've been called to teach you about it, if you'll hear it. So I know there's there are Gentiles like me who are... Just hearing about this truth maybe for the first time. Or maybe they've heard it elsewhere and this is sort of reaffirming. They've never quite been convinced. Maybe they heard it from Israelites in the flesh who taught the hateful message, who taught that only Israelites could be saved. And maybe that message really, um, maybe that message was very uh, negative and very uh, without hope, a hopeless message for them. Well, I'm here to tell you a message of hope because I'm here to tell you what thus saith the Lord. And, uh, and in other parts of this book, the Lord says it's a small thing, tells Jesus it's a small thing for you to recover the house of Israel. I'll make you a light unto the Gentiles. Well, here in, in uh, chapter 56, uh, we'll start at verse 1. This is made, he makes it plain what he thinks of the Gentiles, at least those Gentiles who will keep his Sabbath and keep his commandments. He says, Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Verse 3, Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So, Verse 3, he's telling us, don't let the son of the stranger, I'm the son of the stranger. You may be a son of the stranger, you may be a daughter of the stranger. Neither let us say, um, the Lord hath utterly separated us from, from his people. Uh, let's drop down to verse 6, and he really makes it plain. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Verse 7, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Brothers and sisters, this God is calling to you. This video, it's no accident that you came upon this video. It's no accident at all. In fact, he 
called you to come and listen to this message of hope today for all peoples. Yes, he is very, he only wants to deal with Israel. He has only ever dealt with Israel. But brothers and sisters, you and I can become part of Israel. If we repent, are baptized in his truth in the name of Jesus, and keep his commandments. As the videos, and you can look at some of our past videos, we explore these things. In the future, we will explore even more, and, uh, as well as the live lessons we'll be doing. Uh, and I think you'll get a sense of this truth. You know, Satan, the enemy, um, he wants to attack where the truth is, and that's why we have so many Israelite camps that are out there preaching this message of hate. But the reason he's doing that, and the reason they're doing that, is because the real truth is here. Jesus says this gospel must be preached throughout all the world and then the end will come and you ask yourself, well, there's no place you can go where electricity is on, where it flows, that you can't get a Bible, that you can't be in a hotel and there's Gideon's Bible. You can't go anywhere and you see uh, the, the, the Sunday Roman Christian cross. So their message has been preached everywhere, but the end hasn't come. Have you ever wondered why that is? It's because this real truth, this real truth of the identity of Israel, this real truth of our obligation to keep his commandments in fact that is the basis of his covenant i can read to you in this book where that is the covenant those ten commandments um, that message hasn't been preached that that truth that coming of the kingdom of god here on earth not in heaven here on earth that message hasn't been preached yet not to all the world but we need to do it the end times are coming brothers and sisters how do i know this how do you know this because a Gentile is standing before you, taught by Israelites, preaching the truth, the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God. Until the next video, I bid you peace and blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.